Hallelujah. So the Lord's table is laden with good things. It's laden with the, the miracles. It's laden with the healing. It's laden with his tender mercy. It's laden with anything you need. He's got it there. Laid it out for us. And the Lord is just so moving on people's hearts now to begin to recognize that what God has put there is not something that is so high and hard out to reach. He's not, he's not laid a table for you to, to stand back and, and look at and wish that you could perhaps taste of that. God is tender and kind-hearted and his desire is for you to come into his banqueting table and eat what he's set there for you. Hallelujah. We were looking before I left at, at the book of Jude. I want you just to quickly turn there with me. So just lay a foundation here. It's the last little book before the book of Revelation. This is one of my most favorite verses, verse 20. But you, beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. If you haven't received the prayer language uh, tonight, I would like to pray for you because uh, God wants to give that, wants to pour that out. It's so easy. It's just on the table. It's actually one of the appetizers. It's just easy. You just grab it and, 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 and have it. But listen, it says here, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. Those words, looking for. When you come before God and you're keeping yourself in the love of God, when you're deliberately positioning yourself to let him restore your soul, fill you up, bucket you with his love, he says, this is what I want you to do. Looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus unto eternal life. Those words looking for in the Greek mean to welcome into your life. Receive into. As though someone had come to your door and you were ushering them in. He says, receive into your life the mercy of Christ unto eternal life. Take it and have it. Bring it into your life. Holy, <laughs> this is the key to receiving what's on the table. God wants you to realize, he wants you to be kept in his love to the point that you begin to understand that his love for you is complete and intense. And that everything he's laid out, he wants you to be able to bring it into your life and have it. You know this, be it unto me, Lord, thing that I keep doing and keep saying. This is what this is, looking for the mercy of Jesus Christ. It's, it's bringing into my life that which he's given for me, that which he's laid up, all his benefits, the good things on the table. You know, Western society, we tend to try and pretend that we're polite. Oh, you know, well, we wouldn't, we wouldn't, you know, go and eat from that table uh, until, you know, we were invited. Well, here's the invitation. He says, I want you to receive it into your life. All these mercies, all these beautiful things I've laid up for you, I want you to take it and bring it into your life. Hallelujah. Shaka marahasa baba. You know, a lot of people have a mentality that if I prayed enough or if I fasted enough or if I was spiritual enough, maybe I could reach some of those special delicacies that are on the table. I used to have this mentality. I, I'd fast before every time I'd preach. And then I had a problem when I started to have to preach every day. Sometimes, I, I, what do I do then? You know, I'd, I'd fall down. And not from the glory. <laughs> and so I, had, I was faced with a choice. I had to choose, you know, which service can I afford not to be super anointed for? <laughs> I'm just being really honest. Because I had this mentality that somehow my fasting gave me greater access to the table. You know what? The Bible says, by grace are we saved, 
through faith, not of works, lest any man should boast. And you know what? God has not set it out there saying those that are super monkish, extraordinarily super spiritual people, you can have the miracles in the middle of the table. The rest of you can maybe just get forgiveness of sins. A lot of us think that way though. We think somehow I've got to work this up. You know, I've got to be spiritual. And if I'm really spiritual, then maybe God will show up. And if he didn't show up, it's probably because I wasn't spiritual enough. But God, the awake, oh, <laughs> the good news of the gospel is that it's really, really good news. The good news of the gospel is that it's not based on what you do. You know, I've told you the story about this heroin addict that the very day after she was saved, delivered, born again, set free, she was laying hands on people that were being slain in the spirit on the street and getting delivered from heroin. Somebody forgot to tell her that, you know, you have to wait seven years and have your character really worked out before you're allowed to lay hands on anybody. The awakening that's happening is that people are realizing he really means it when he says, come as little children. If you laid out a banquet in front of a little child and you said, come and eat the chocolate, they wouldn't have any problem with helping themselves. God wants you to lay hold of what he's laid hold of for you. He says it was for freedom that you were set free. He says, don't forget any of my benefits. I want you to take it. I want you to receive it. Because I've laid it out for you on the table. Hallelujah. God wants to set you free from a mentality that makes you feel you've somehow got to earn what God has already paid for. I was having so much fun, service after service, giving away what I didn't pay for. And that's what we've stepped into, a revelation that, hey, we get to give away what we haven't paid for. I haven't earned this. I'm not, I haven't been spiritual enough or done enough to earn this. I've just suddenly woken up and realised he loves me, oh, he loves me, <laughs> and he said, come in here, beggars, blind, poor people, tell them all to come into my banqueting table, hallelujah. The rich people, the, the people who, who, who were, I, I, I invited, they decided that you know, they were too busy or it wasn't important enough to come, and he's saying, anybody, just grab anybody, I just want them to eat my dinner. You know the story? He said, go and get them. Look, the house isn't full yet. Bring them in, bring them in, bring them in, bring them in. Tell them to come and eat. You see, I am not, not ever going to go back to a level of Christianity that would be content with just talking about God. I've tasted and seen that the Lord is good. And once you taste and once you see, you're wrecked for the ordinary. Hallelujah. I want to see, I want to see the people of God lay hold of what God has laid hold of for them.